What I'm looking to do is make a name in the hooligan game, you understand? Miami, USA versus Millwall, brother. And after that, I'm looking to shut you guys down. You understand what you get, brother? You think it's all a game? I like football. It's good, clean fun. Back in the 80s, it was slightly less clean, though, with British teams having extremely violent gangs called firms associated with them. Their fave thing was to meet up after the game and beat the living shit out of each other. In fact, this became the main event. This evolved into the casual subculture, with its own music and clothes, involving lads battering each other in smart Fred Perry shirts to the sounds of oi punk. This luckily waned in the UK a long time ago, but there is one man across the pond in sunny Miami whose life's work is to single-handedly revive and transplant the British hooligan scene into America. England is number one, always and forevermore. Derek Diablo Alvarez made waves online for uploading his uh, unusual videos, calling out firms from Millwall, Chelsea and Lincoln, claiming he was part of a firm called the Miami Casuals and getting absolutely seen off in the comments section for doing so. Mr. Millwall, so-called, Mr. Hooligan, so-called, Mr. Top Boy. He hosts his own cooking show called Hooligan Kitchen. If you want to be a hooligan, you got to eat like a hooligan. And all the while, he brags about his own firm out in Miami. Millwall, how do you like it? The only problem, Miami doesn't have a football team yet. And Derek has never been to Britain, once. Just think of yourselves as coaches in my American hooligan league, brother. And I'm not sure he really likes football at all, just a shouting part. So is it possible to export British football violence into the US? Could the family-friendly, NBA-style soccer culture be converted into a violent hellscape of aqua scutum and bleeding faces? Atlanta, united, we're never divided. We flew out to Florida to meet Derek and the Miami Casuals and go to the nearest football game he could find in Orlando in a bid to discover whether the US was the new site of football hooliganism. We are in Miami to meet Diablo, or Derek, or Mr. D, Master D, D1, a man of many names. And we're here to find out more about the football violence firm that he's starting here in a city that doesn't have its own football team yet. Hello. Hey, how's Hi. it going? Hi, you must be here for D, huh? I am, yeah. The only thing is he's sleeping, so I don't know if you want to maybe try getting him up. If he wakes up swinging, better you than me. <laughs> Derek? Hey, man. Go in, give him a nudge. Okay. Uh, Derek? Uh, it's Joel here from Vice uh, for the documentary, if you're about. You need to do this Cuban mama style. D, Derek, 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 hi. Fuck off, I'm wrong, you cunt. <laughs> Thank you, man. Minutes. You got five. With five minutes, mate. So what's your guys' deal? We've been working closely for about two years. You know, it's a professional relationship, but, I mean, we're friends. I just knew, I was like, man, this is a phenomenon. How dare you come in my fucking flat unannounced <laughs> and don't get a lemon. Is that a British accent? I'll be back. <laughs> Are you sure he needs a coffee? Yeah, no. <laughs> OK. Trust me, trust me. All right. Now, your cameras get to see the greatest article on this planet. The man above all other men from UK to US. Before your eyes. The James Brown of hooliganism. The hardest working man in the game. That's me, Diablo. Yeah. Take those cameras off me till I'm ready. Hey, man. Got a shirt on. <laughs> right, right. No, I'm awake now, mate. You're awake? You ready? Yeah. I've been looking at all your clubber while you've been in there. Ooh! Hey! For an American, for a Yank, what do you say about that clubber, Jack? You see that? Danny Dyer! Hey! That guy, Danny Dyer, you heard of him? I'm aware of him. Hey, besides that. Hey, 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 hey! What American you know? Takini, buddy. I've been ahead of the treads since day one. OG Sambas, you see that? You haven't even worn his. Manchester United, baby. I wore them a lot of times. I just wear them careful. They got the tag in. United! Man United! I wear them with the tag, baby. So can you talk to me? With the boys in red, and we're on our way to Wembley. 
Wembley! What do you say? The dynamic between Derek and I is very patient babysitter versus kid who just drank tango. So if you ever see someone walking around dressed like this, and you, and, you don't, away from them. and you don't they know... They don't them. deserve to wear the clapper. If you don't know football, first thing I'm going to say, what firm you support. Okay. You don't know the firm, I'm taking your stuff away from you. Like you're taking their clothes off in the street. Maybe. Is this breakfast, a little breakfast, Stella? Yeah. Let's go get a beer. Fuck it. IMF, 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 IMF. I'm feeling uh, a touch confused, I would say. That's the limit of how I'm feeling right now. I'd, actually, I can't tell whether more beers is going to help or hinder what's going on. It might slow things down a little bit so I can keep up. And it might speed them up. You never know. You got a lighter, mate? I don't, sorry. I hate doing that. There was something about seeing a skinhead biting the cap off his Guinness and shouting English-style football chants on the streets of Miami that just didn't feel right. From Pele in the 70s to Beckham in the noughties, the world's best players had failed to make football properly take off in the US. And where it existed, it was mainly a family day out. Atlanta, oh Atlanta. So I didn't know how Diablo was going to create a hardened firm of nutters here in Miami, especially without a team. So how did the casual thing start? I just wanted to claim casuals, Miami casuals, as a transition from punk to skinhead to casual. It's very natural. And you dress better, and you don't stick out with the OB. OK, then I'm very interested in what your definition of a football hooligan is. A football hooligan is one who not merely loves football, but who has an extreme, a fanatical passion, who is willing to fight for their territory. When you got the right clubber and you know your culture, and you move into a city with the intention of steaming the away end, taking their pub, wrecking the local firm, having your say, having a laugh. Now that, my brother, is football hooliganism. So I suppose the thing you're passionate about as part of your hooliganism isn't necessarily a club or one club or many It's clubs. British culture. It's a British outlook. Yeah. It's the English disease. The British plague, as has been said. OK. Do you need a club to be able to do that? Who am I to say? All right, well, uh, Jesus. I'm going to change my clubber. And I'm going to make a video. After you. While Derek got changed, I wondered which titan of English football he was going to call out this time. Action. Stoke! Stoke hooligans. To all hooligans worldwide. All ultras, all barra bravas, all football casuals. It don't matter what firm you're from, mate. I feel like I can add another chapter to this thing. But we'll see how it goes. Smashed it. In one. Come That's on. how I do it every time. It's all, all, the, all of it is in one take. Just one, boom, straight out. Bye. After a pretty intense introduction to Miami football culture, the next day Derek invited me to his nearby dojo, where, after the early evening class where he teaches violent martial arts to eight to tens, he and his top lads were planning to brutally initiate a new recruit into their firm. It might look like a simple martial arts class, but these are the top boys of the Miami Casuals firm. So first up, we've got Playboy, a Colombian ex-gangster who can't close his fist all the way on account of the amount of people he's battered in the face with it. He's not good at all much. John the Greek and his mate Kev both like their jiu-jitsu with a side of Green Street. Manuel, the bloke hoping to be initiated today, is over from a hardened firm in Spain. And finally, there's Cody, who's about nine feet tall and I don't have any further trivia for. These are your top boys. OK, you can do some forms with us. All right, here we go. He's from Beatty's firm, Sevilla, Spain. He invited all of us, any of us who wants to do stuff like this, to go. They just went to Lazio, some of the most feared Nazi hooligans in the world. OK, bow to each other and begin. All right, admission. I thought we'd turn up and see a load of Americans in Stone Island loudly battering each other with drain pipes. 
But what we've seen so far tonight is definitely just... Three minutes! A martial arts class. I'm still not quite sure what the Miami Casuals actually are, or whether they actually exist. I think the Miami Casuals have a premium new member. Uh, this will conclude training for today. Saturday, we're going to Orlando City versus NYCFC. And then Sunday, 3 p.m., we're going to fight, do the force fight. Is that clear? All right, stand up. Very good. How did that go? Well, it went great. I had never seen Mel Wells fighting before. Yeah, I know yeah. he's, all I know is he's a violent ultra from another country who, who hit me up to come meet up with us. So I'm like, yeah, you gotta meet, you gotta fight one of my guys. That more or less t takes everybody out of it, typically. Tell us what's next. Now the class is over, what are we gonna do now? Now we go to the pub, the most authentic British restaurant and pub in all of Florida. Let's go to the pub. Yeah, right. Okay, man. Hope you guys all enjoyed yourselves. I did, man. Thank you. Dee's just rolled up inexplicably in a completely different outfit to what he left in. Well, lads, here we are. King's Head Pub. This is the top I've seen. Ready? Right. Ready? Show me. Let's have it. Let's have it. Hey, love. Two pints of bodies. Hey, hey. Two pints of bodies. All right. Tomorrow was the big MLS game. Orlando versus New York City FC. This was the closest match Diablo could find to his team as Miami. It would feature two old rival firms, so promised to be spicy. Boddington, cream of Manchester, best beer on the planet. Perhaps finally, Diablo could get the fight he was clearly so horny for. How many lads are you expecting tomorrow? From my firm? Yeah. I'm only going with me and the Playboy. Okay. I don't want, I don't want to have no maniacs in my group that go off and do something on their own and jeopardize the reputation of the group and affect us with MLS and so forth, you know? Is it quite difficult to get them to lean into the football side of the culture? Oh, it's not going to be difficult at all because we're going to have the best football club in the world. We're going to have the... And also, there's more beautiful women here than anywhere else. It's not like going to be like you're in the middle of a shitty town in, sorry, in backwater England where, it, you know, the main thing is you're firm. All right, I'm buzzing to go fuck up NYFC. <laughs> Fuck NYFC! Orlando City all the way! I knew we had an early drive to Orlando, so I ducked out of there before Derek performed his set, a rap oi hybrid he describes as cutthroat core, in a back room at the pub. I was disappointed to discover that only one of the firm could make it to the big away game, but I was still excited to see the football factory played out in the home of Disneyland. So far, the information we have is Derek was going to be sleeping at Playboy's house, which we are outside at the moment. But then we got a phone call from him, literally when we were in the car to Playboy's house, saying he didn't sleep at Playboy's house. Playboy, remember, is uh, the hooligan nutter who can't even close his own hand because he's punched too many people with it. He's apparently the sober and composed one. So start of a three and a half hour road trip with someone who's could be described as quite an erratic presence, is going, I would say, medium to badly at the moment. After driving around for a while, including a weird detour where we took a wordless playboy to the bank, we finally found the James Brown of hooliganism at a nearby petrol station, another inexplicable outfit changed down, and carrying a load of dry cleaning. Let's fucking have it. And I'll tell all these fuckers, don't get fucking lemon. Do you ever wonder what Derek would speak like if he never got the football factory on DVD? Let's have it. Do you expect to hit anyone today? Hopefully not, but if they step across that line, bing, 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 bop, bop, bop. I'm not going to relive my experience of that car ride. Nietzsche's, uh, you know, Nietzsche's daughter. But let's just say, it lasted three and a half hours. Benicio del Toro movie. And when Derek wasn't talking... Vanilla muffins. He was controlling the stereo. But I get to sit there to control the music. And there are torture survivors who flinch less at loud noises now than I do. <laughs> Here we are. Hey. Let's just hope for the best, shall we? I'm quite uh, intrigued because Dee was promising that everyone here would be up for a fight. So the sort of makeup of the fans we've seen so far is for like lots of mums with children, groups of smiley faced young women and, and unintoxicated men. Like it's a very wholesome sports day vibe right now. <laughs> this is the Orlando 
mass there. They're ready to just kick their flip flops off and just fuck, fuck New York City up. It's going to be carnage out here. Absolute mayhem. Oi, oi! You're about to meet Stephen McKnight, the hardest casual in all of Orlando. I hope you're ready. Hey, Orlando man. City supporter. Oh yeah. Old nice school. Nice Orlando anti-fascist skinhead. I'll turn it over to Stephen McKnight. You understand? I was about 18 years old the first time that I met Diablo. I was running with all the Puerto Rican skinheads up here in Orlando. The problem is there just wasn't enough of us. Yeah. You know the 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 Nazis fucking. They outnumbered us constantly. There's a couple of clubs in America that have very right-wing followings. New York City FC Are they one of actually them? one of them. Are you expecting those to turn out today? With New York City FC, it's, it's always hard to tell. Once we get into the stadium, we'll be able to put a little, a better gauge on it. Hey! What's up, baby? Hey, what's up, my man? As we walked through Orlando's Disney light streets, it became more and more apparent that, no matter how up for a fight Diablo was, the rest of the Orlando City fans, including the world's least threatening ex-Marine, there's a really good Thai place. We're actually here for a nice day out. It's Diablo, man. He's always doing something. United! Man United! We're the boys in red and we're on the way to Wembley. Wembley, Wembley. We're the boys in red and we're on the way to Wembley. Now, that's the only song you need to know. He's taken some liberties with the melody, but I kind of rate it. We were actually on our way to Orlando City Stadium, a far cry from Wembley, but, according to Diablo, the site of an imminent brutal war between a Nazi New York firm and the fearsome ILF. Sadly, I'd left my knuckle duster at home, but luckily had all two members of the Miami Casuals to defend me. If any NYCFC come against us, we're ready. And just film. Because if they come against us, it's going to be defensive. But fuck NYCFC to the beginning to the end. We got to go, baby. It's already a quarter let's till. Let's go. Let's, uh, let's shoot. Football mania! MLS football is definitely an experience. The place had a sellout crowd with everyone wearing team colors. The away section was about 50 people strong and set up in the stands amongst the home supporters. And though the ILF was sat opposite us, the most violent thing they seemed to do was set off the odd smoke bomb after a goal. But I suppose I was most fascinated with Derek, who didn't particularly seem to care about the football itself. He was making some gestures and starting some Man U chants like he just read How To Be A Hooligan manuals online. For someone who says he lives and breathes football violence, he seemed particularly detached from the sport itself. The whole atmosphere is like somewhere between Disneyland and an actual football game. It's the most safe I felt at any football match in my life. There was not a micro particle of aggro there. It's like trying to start a fucking fist fight at like parents' evening. As most of the NYFC fans filed back to the family friendly hotel near the stadium, NYCFC! It became more and more apparent to Diablo that he wasn't going to get the fight he dreamt of here today. You see where they're at? Nowhere. Look at the stadium. You see nothing. Anytime you want, NYCFC, fuck you pussies. It had been a big day of not hitting people in the face, and Derek was all took it out. Time to put the Diablo to bed. Before I went home, I wanted to have a final chat with Diablo about whether he really thought it was possible to create his British football violence utopia here in sunny Miami or whether it was entirely a fantasy played out online. I met him at his big forest fight, which, again, it was just jujitsu, but this time it was outside. After yesterday, what I would ask is, are you training for a fight that's never gonna happen? Possibly so, but in the meantime, we have the sport version. We'll be number one in hooliganism. We'll be number one in forest fighting, no question. I just gotta get everybody to know what it is, and uh, there'll be, we just need more exposure. We can carry the tradition on to the clothes, to the clobber, to the language, to the expression, the slang, the rhyming slang. If we asked all the other guys who were fighting out here today if they're in a firm, would they say yes? 
No, <laughs> they don't all exactly know what a firm is, but they've seen the forest fights and they've seen regular hooligan fights. It's a tribute to that, but done in a, in a modern way. That's what I feel. That's why I like the term neo-hooliganism. Being a hooligan is subjective. It's up to the individual what they perceive it to be. So are you a hooligan? Uh, I'll leave that to your audience, <laughs> you know? <laughs> do you think you've done enough to prove yourself to British hooligans? No. What do you have to do? Go to England and fight. From what I'd seen, I really wasn't sure whether a terrorist-inspired culture of football violence could ever be translated to America, beyond the clubber. The MLS is too glossy, too fun, and the best player is Wayne Rooney. I'm not sure crowds of families and fans young and old really want to swap out having a hot dog for having a big scrap. But if anyone can make football hooliganism thrive here in the US, it's sure to be Diablo. In a way, I hope he finds the fight he's looking for out here. And I also hope that, one day, he comes to England and someone tries to kick his head in. I think he'd really, really like that. Now, besides that, I ain't got too much to say. Good night. <laughs>